there, Alex here. This is the Oppo Reno 10X Zoom. I know the name is a little extra, but we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about the phone itself. So without further ado, let's get started on this review. In terms of the design of the phone, the Reno 10X Zoom shares a lot of similarities with the Reno. A metal and glass body which looks and feels great, the same flushed back panel with a little nub to protect it from scratches, it has the same awesome looking almost bezel-less AMOLED screen, it has the same in-screen fingerprint sensor which works decently for the most part, and the same shark fin pop-up camera which still looks pretty cool. Again, just want to mention that durability is still an unknown, but I wouldn't be too worried since it comes with 2 years warranty. My only concern is just the lack of water resistance, which I guess can't be helped because of the pop-up camera, so just be a little bit more careful with the phone. Another thing to take note of is that this is a pretty big and heavy phone compared to the Reno. Some folks might not like the size, but it does make the phone feel a little more solid. And we do get a slightly bigger screen here, which is great for multimedia consumption. Anyway, the hardware is beefier on the inside as well. It's a Snapdragon 855 with the same amount of storage and RAM, a larger battery, and the added bonus of a micro SD card slot. So if you like to store a lot of media content on your phone or install a ton of games, you're looking at the right phone. Like every other phone that I've tested with this chipset, it performs extremely well. I don't really have much else to say here other than that. But I do want to mention the excellent battery life that I have been getting. Even with heavier usage, like lots of photo taking and playing games, I'm ending the day with more than 30% battery remaining. Like the Reno, we're getting 20 watt fast charging with the included charger. So despite the larger battery, it charges really quickly. The Reno 10X Zoom also gets an upgrade to dual speakers. Most of the volume is still coming from the bottom speaker, but it still sounds pretty good. With a screen as nice as this, better speakers are definitely nice to have. Unfortunately, it doesn't have a headphone jack for some reason. Given the choice, I'll take dual speakers over a headphone jack, but on a phone this big, it would be nice to have both options. Anyway, in regards to software, I'm also not going to talk too much about ColorOS since it's pretty much the same as the Reno. It's still a little heavy for my taste and I'm still a little annoyed by apps asking for permissions they don't need. But the performance is really good and it has a lot of useful features inside. Unless you're really particular about software updates or having a clean version of Android, it's not going to be a deal breaker. So let's move on to the cameras, which is pretty much the main selling point of the phone. And of course, we have to start with the 13 megapixel telephoto camera with 5x optical zoom. I know the name of the phone says 10x zoom, which is a little misleading since it's partly digital zoom, but it does sort of make sense since 10x is probably as far as you can go without losing too much quality. It can go all the way up to 60x, which is quite fun at times, but the image quality is no better than just taking a photo at 10x zoom and then just cropping in. Anyway, 10x is still a lot more range than what most other phones offer, and it is quite convenient when shooting subjects that you can't get too close to. Personally, I still think a wide-angle camera is more fun to use, and thankfully, the one on the Reno 10x zoom performs quite well. It does struggle a little in low light, but it's the same for most other phones with wide-angle cameras. It does have a night mode which brightens up the shot, but it loses a bit of details and the colours look a little off. In fact, just taking a normal shot and pumping up the shadows by 20% in Photoshop produces nicer looking images to me. This is something that can be improved with software updates, so I definitely hope that Oppo will try to improve their night mode. In terms of the main camera, it performs similarly to the Reno, which isn't a huge surprise since it's the same 48 megapixel camera sensor, just with optical image stabilization and laser autofocus. It's able to capture good looking images with nice details, the auto HDR works really well, and night mode performs decently as well. The front camera is able to capture pleasing looking shots, and video capture looks really good too. But for some reason, it's only able to use the main camera for video capture, which is a weird restriction. Overall, the camera experience on the Reno 10X Zoom is pretty good. Camera quality is quite good, and I think a lot of consumers will enjoy the flexibility that the triple camera setup offers. So all things considered, I think the Reno 10X Zoom is a nice upgrade over the regular Oppo Reno. 
it offers almost everything that's great and unique about the Reno, just with an even better camera setup, better multimedia experience, as well as better performance. It might be missing a couple of features compared to other flagship devices, but it's still a really well-rounded package. And I think it's a phone that most people will enjoy using. Thanks for watching this quick review of the Oppo Reno 10X Zoom. If you've enjoyed it, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more content in the future. Thanks again, and see you guys on the next one.